Revelation 3. Thank you, Lord. Revelation chapter 3. Is everybody there in verse 15? He says that I know your works. They are neither cold or hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I'm rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire, that you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with I salve, that you may what? That you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, hello. He didn't say if anyone reads my word. He says if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. Now, there's this area where he says, anoint your eyes with eye salve. And by anointing your eyes with eye salve, what, is he, what he means is the anointing is in his presence because you are maintaining the level of the presence of God. There must be a maintaining of a level of vision, which is spiritual sight. There must be a level of, in other words, you are maintaining a vision. You're not losing focus, not only of who you are, but about the kingdom. You're not losing focus. You're maintaining a vision that is spiritual sight. Now, I want you to understand that spiritual sight is also known as faith. Because faith is not blind. Amen? Faith is not blind. Faith is being able to see spiritually. That's why we want to be seers, not just not dreamers, false dreamers. We want to be seers in the spirit. And what, one of the things you want to see is to see yourself like him. To see yourself like him. You know, people wear these little bands and it says, what would Jesus do? Amen. Well, that band is supposed to cause you to see yourself like him. It's what would Jesus do? That means is what I'm going to do. So you're to see yourself like him. You're to maintain the vision of what Jesus did. You're to maintain that vision. Spiritual sight. So there must be a level of vision that we call faith by seeing yourself like him. The Bible says, and when you awake, you'll be in his image. First Peter chapter 4. And then one more. First Peter chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 1, would you read it with me? Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves with the what? Same mind, seeing yourself like him. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in a lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. And regarding these things, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood as dissipation, speaking evil of you. So when this new identity is established in you, and now you're learning how to maintain this new identity, others are going to come against you, aren't they? Amen. People you used to hang with. I'll never forget, because well, I was in a drug role for 20 years, and once I had a visitation from the Lord, uh, everybody kind of freaked out on me. Well, they thought I freaked out on them, actually. Because they said, man, stay away from God. Guy, he's seen God. So they would mock it. But I didn't care. I saw God. Praise God. <laughs> I no longer needed the bottle, the bag, or anything else. I had 
everything I was looking for in him. So you, people are going to come against you and call you crazy. Even religious people. See, they won't understand because they don't know the they don't understand the new identity. They don't understand the identity of what is told them, not the identity of what the spirit witnesses to them. Because they can't see spiritually. You must be in the spirit to be able to see the things of the spirit. Amen. So even religious people will come against you. I'll never forget I went to a place and this guy got all over my case. Told me everything that happened to me was delusional. I said, Lord, he's a pastor of a church. He said, he don't know me. I think he's got a big congregation. He said, he don't know me. I thought, whoa. See, I thought when people got saved, every, they, got, they got taken for a little while, you know. <laughs> Cleaned up, flushed up. I don't understand why we needed to minister to the body of Christ. I thought we were wasting too much time because there's too many people out there needing to have Jesus. Then I realized that the body of Christ is also damaged. It needs healing because people are coming into the kingdom, but they need to know how the kingdom rules. They need to know kingdom principles and integrity. Why? Because you're royal. Amen. Amen. You're royal, and you don't belong in this realm anyways. So why you're in this realm, because if you didn't belong here, you wouldn't need to sleep, right? But you must sleep every night to regenerate because you don't belong here because you're a spirit. Amen. So we need to learn kingdom principles so we can walk in them and have the blessings of God and have all of heaven behind us instead of all of hell in front of us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is everybody okay? In verse 6. Oh, verse 5. It says, They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel is preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to the man in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be what? Serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the mind, manifold grace of God. One of the things I want to share with you, the sixth thing, is called maintaining the level of love. And there must be a love that a level of love that's maintained in maintaining your identity in Christ. And, and in this, now love is not a feeling. Love is a choice. Amen. So what you're going to do is you're going to choose to forgive. That's expressing love. Has everybody got it? Um, you know, you might have been persecuted. You might be misunderstood and all th kinds of things because of your new identity. It has nothing to do with it. You forgive. And you make the choice to forgive and you go on. You forgive, you bless, you go on. Even if you don't like the person. Because forgiveness is a fruit of love. I might not like what the person does, but I know it's not the person. I know it's the spirits that are manipulating that person. So I got to forgive him and go on. Amen? Amen? That's six things. So everybody got it. So what's the first one? Maintaining the level of discipline. The second one is maintaining the level of worship. The third one is what? Maintaining a level of intercession. The fourth, maintaining a level of rest. The fifth, maintaining a level of vision. The sixth, maintaining a level of love. And I want to close at 3 John 2 through 8. Third John two through eight. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Verse two. Is everybody there? It's just for you. 
Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. Beloved, you do... Oh, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in what? Truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love because the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth, walking in the truth and fellow workers of the truth because each one is maintaining his new identity in Christ. Does everybody got it? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you'll protect this seed and allow it to grow and bear fruit for your glory. And all of those things that are stealing our identity or preventing our identity from being maintained, that you would remove them and adjust them. That you would expose them. And that we would overcome those areas by the power of Christ and the love of Christ. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah.